Should I talk to the camera or to you? To me, to me. Can we go right, there? But sit real close. But don't be afraid of camera, guys. Move that chair right to it. Okay. Don't be afraid of it, man. Now nah, you guys are terrified. Put put your head behind. You see my hand? Put your head over there so I can look at you <laughs> no, and talk. We can Just pick up the fucking chair and move it, man. Stop being punks, okay? Good, now you're talking. All right, good. <laughs> sit down. All right. Otherwise, you know, I'm looking this way and you're filming my ear. Do you want it here? You want to hear it here? Here's a perfect here. Go ahead, film that. This is how you set the shot up, dude. Sorry, sorry. All right? You understand what I'm saying? No, you don't. Do you speak English? All right. Are we rolling? Yeah, it's rolling. Right. Right. Okay, here we go. Hi, it's Abel. How you doing? Now we're ready to rock and roll. Fassbinder. Fassbinder, yeah. yeah. no, no, Fassbinder is our are, guy, are you know. You influenced by Fassbinder? Yeah, big time, you know what I mean? I mean, big time. I mean, it's like Pasolini, you know what I mean? I mean, he's like Peckinpah. You know, at that point, I was, you know, convinced I had to live the, you know, I had to out do, you know, you had to live that life to, to get that, that, to get that, those kind of films. Yes. You know? And, um... You know, I mean, that's a bullshit fucking take on the world because I love Kubrick, I love his guy, and, I love, and those guys weren't out there, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shooting and cuting and doing the whole nine yards, you know what I mean? I mean, those other guys were, uh, you know, I don't know if it was more like we were into the lifestyle and therefore we connected to these directors who, I mean, they all killed themselves. You know, Pasolini was dead 10 years younger than I am now. How old was Fassbender when he died? Uh, I think 37. Something. Yeah, that's a nice long run. Yes. <laughs> 36. Yeah. 36, that's even longer. Okay, fine. Back and forth, you know, okay, he had some time under his belt. But, um, but, you know, hey, who cares about all that? The bottom line is the movies were good. You know, there's a lot of guys out there drinking and, 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 and doing the shit, and the movie, and they don't even make movies, or the, or the movies are bad. You know, I mean, he made the real movies, and if you heard him talking, he said the right things, at least to my ears at that point. You know, the same thing with Pasolini, and the same thing with Peckinpah, you know. We were talking a lot how to deal with these final minutes, and today it doesn't matter where you live or how much money you have, we are all about to face the same fate at the same moment. I mean, it's a, it's a genre that, that that's a genre, you know? I mean, it's it's part of, the, I guess, the sci-fi, it's a sub-genre, you know? The world's gonna end, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, Bruce Willis has gotta go atomic bomb, and my boy, um, what's the other actor? God damn, he was in my movie. Um, I'm not good with names. You, you know, he's, he's the star of Scorsese's Boardwalk. Uh, uh, he's a star. Buscemi? Buscemi, yeah. Steve Buscemi and, and, and uh, Bruce Willis have to go atom bomb a fucking meteorite on the way to yours, right? Yeah, right. Remember that one? On the beach. There must have been 10 episodes of Twilight Zone about the end of the world. You know, my films are about people, you know, in situations. They're not about the situation, they're about the people. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sandy, oh wow, yeah, that, I didn't even realize that myself. <laughs> yeah, so it's no, uh, Shannon, you have to talk to Shannon. She was in New York during the earthquake. It was pretty 444-esque. It was, it was bad, bro. It was the end of the world. You know, it shows you, like, okay, don't believe in global warming. Don't believe in any of that. No, none. You know, the, the ice, you know, is melting. This is, no. The, the storms like that happen all the time. Hey, man, I lived my whole life in New York. There was no storm ever like that. Ever, 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 okay? And, you know, a week after that, there was another monster storm that was like nothing because of Sandy. So, you know. You know, New York is an island, bro. 
and one day, like, you know, you talk about a tsunami, that's going to be the end of New York. On top of it, it's built on a fault. So as much as they're thinking there's going to be an earthquake in L.A., uh, have you guys ever been in an earthquake? No. Never. All right. I was in a serious earthquake. Man, you know, you talk about what they say. The God is dead meeting has been canceled. You know what I mean? After you've been in an earthquake, it fucking changes your whole outlook on every fucking thing. When the ground no longer is the ground, man, your whole concept of who and what the fuck you are and what you think the world is, is like <laughs> turned right around. Where, where was it in LA? LA, LA. Yeah. 90, whatever it was. It was bad, man. You know, I mean, hey, I didn't die, but a lot of people could have got killed. It was like one of these things. Ooh. But, you know, all over the world, every week somebody's getting murdered in an earthquake. The one in Haiti. Fucking forget it, you know. At 4.44 a.m. tomorrow morning, there will be no survivors. The world will end. The formulaic way of like, hey, I write a screenplay, an actor shows up who I never met, I hand him the pages. You know, when I used to do Miami Vice, right, there'd be a woman on a set who was like, I don't know, a script uh, technician or something, and, and the actor would say, I can't go there. And she'd go, cut. She says, no, the script says you cannot go there. Like, Don Johnson have to say, I cannot go there, not I can't go there. Right? And he'd get a bill bent out of shape, we'd stop the thing and arguing, and, you know, if you can call it, you know, you dig what I'm saying? But that's not how we make movies, man. You know what I mean? I mean, the script is, is an idea that is developed with the actors I have. Right? You know that. Yeah. And then, you know, and then, first of all, every script is an improvisation. You dig? And every scene is an improvisation on the improvisation. And the rehearsal is an improvisation on the improvisation on the improvisation. You dig? Then you get to the point where you're not improving. You know, you get to the end point of what you're trying to do. And maybe you try that. Willem is a friend of mine. Shannon I live with. You know what I mean? So, you know, some of that stuff could have been filmed at home before we even got to the set. You know what I mean? I mean, we used to do that too. I mean, Dangerous Game, we filmed a lot. Of, I have filmed that stuff in hotel rooms at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, some of Harvey's best scenes were just me and him in a room shooting. That way I put it in the movie. You, you know what I mean? I mean, just because you see it doesn't mean it was done between, you know, uh, work on working hours, you know, during the union hours of nine to eight, five days a week. You dig? Yeah. I mean, we're shooting on, on it. If you're going to use a digital camera, man, like we could shoot a movie now, right? You think they're right? I know they're right. What if they're wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the streets look like any normal holiday. Pretty calm, at least for now. Oh! Oh, leave that man alone! You smoke my cigarette, I'm gonna die. We could do this interview at midnight on Skype, right? You can call me up on Skype and say, hey, I forgot to ask you a question. And then you just put it in with everything else, right? And fool everybody, okay? So when we start playing that game ourselves, like, hey, we're gonna Skype, we're gonna do a scene with an actor that's not even there. We're gonna Skype the guy, right? Okay, so, so I don't know why people don't do this more. They save a lot of money in aggravation, okay? I know some actors were like, we would say, you could stay where you live. You live in, in L.A., you stay in L.A. We're in New York, we Skype you, you do the scene. But where's the hair? Like, I remember the, the best one was, but there's not going to be hair and makeup and a cinematographer's not going to be there. I mean, what's going to film me? Think your computer, dude. It's Skype. Okay, that's why it's Skype, because you get filmed by, okay. And then I realized, yeah, that, 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 that's really the drawback. Not the drawback, because to me, I'm thinking, wow, we don't have to fly the person all the way to New York. We don't have to feed them. We don't have to pick them up at the airport. We don't have to listen to their bullshit, you know. You know. But you need some rock and rollers. I mean, we had Anita Pallenberg. You know, we had, you know, you need the rock and rollers for that kind of work. Sense of caring, one another. Sense of shit, one another. There's a sense of community. It's getting heavy. <laughs> We're all gonna die, guys. We're already dead. <laughs> The night in New York, you could shoot without lights, and that for me is a big, 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 big plus. Even though I am totally convinced you could do that with Kodak negative, but you know, hey, I'm you know I'm not gonna be a lone voice in the fucking woods here. Kodak don't need me, and you know, I need them more than they need me. <laughs> but um, when you have the guys and everybody philosophically 
categorically believing you don't need lights, which means you really don't need the crew, you know, or a certain part of the crew. You know what I mean? You don't need to be hanging. Uh, anyway, it's a very, you have to know the business to get what I'm talking about. So you are then, um, you got to make a commitment to where you're shooting. And you got to know what you're looking at when you're looking at it. You dig? Yeah. Okay? Because that's why you have a DP. Because we could look here and I'll say, this looks beautiful. Or it might not be filmable. It might be. It might not. You know what I mean? Hey. But at my age, at my advanced age, I know what the fuck I'm looking at. You know what I mean? And when I'm looking at locations, I know what's going to work. The freedom comes from inside you and your, and, your, and your ability to overcome. You know, you can have all the digital shit in the world. If you're working with somebody who does not make you free, then you're not going to be free. You know what I mean? Godard used to go to get the biggest cameras, clunkiest, hardest to shoot cameras in the history of the world. Cameras from the 40s, the 50s, just because he liked the look of them. He was as free as you're going to get, you know? The freedom don't come from the equipment. The freedom comes from inside of you, you know what I mean? What you could do, what you're thinking about, what you want to think about, you know? What is wrong with you? The end of the world, the end of the dream. I want to see it. I could care less if somebody's watching my film you know what I mean? At the Cannes Film Festival, under per perfect, you know, cinematic experience, quote unquote, okay? Though you're also watching it in Cannes as a premiere, so that changes the <clears throat> experience big time. Or some kid is watching it on his phone as he's standing in a subway and he's watching it five minutes at a time. Like he'll watch five minutes of the film now, maybe five minutes two months from now. Maybe you'll never see the end. Maybe, you know, fast forward through the shit he don't like, watch the stuff he likes eight times. You dig what I mean? I, 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 once I make the film, it's beyond, it's outside of my control what happens to it. Fucking, you know, about who got it, who sees it, who gets it, who don't get it. You know what I mean? That's like, I'm no, you know, I mean, just in, 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 in you know, you know, my days of, of being P.T. Barnum, or Spike Lee, or, or all, you know, like where I'm gonna now raise the money for the film, and I'm gonna have this vision of the film, and then I'm gonna go out and put it in every theater in the world, and I'm gonna put the, in Russia, I'm gonna do the voices myself, I'm gonna speak Russian just to make it perfect. And I'm gonna make sure when it shows in, in the North Pole that the igloo is all heated. You know what I mean? Like, forget it, man. I can't raise money, I don't raise money, I don't have money to make movies, okay? I'm a director, I make the movies. After that, I don't give a fuck what happens to them, you dig? Yeah. Because I can't, because there's nothing I can do about it. I don't know how to sell something, you yeah. dig? I'm so not about, so I make things, I don't you sell did. things, like things, okay? Yeah, I like it, that's all I know how to do. I can't do the other things, so I don't no longer kidding myself that I can. I mean, I, can, I, I, I gotta concentrate on what I do, man, and that's what I do. Forgive me. All we have is right now. All we have is each other. So you don't like films at all? Yes. <laughs> you like films. Do you yeah. know who I am? What do you really want to know? Come on, you came all the way here. What do you want to know from me? Don't worry about 444. Forget the movie. Forget movies for anything. What do you want to okay. ask me? Okay, actually, I wanted to talk a little bit about another movie of you, which I really love, and it's uh, New Rose Hotel. New Rose Hotel. Yeah. Okay, why do you love it so much? What's the name? Uh, Asia, Asia, Willem, and um, Chris, and Walken, right? Okay. 